This is the Unstarving Musicians Podcast. The podcast features conversation for musicians of all types and genres, a curation of expertise intended to help all musicians be better at marketing, business, the creative process, and all the other things that empower us to do more of what we love, make music. Hola and greetings, my lovely listeners. This is Robonzo, a.k.a. Roberto. This episode of the Unstarving Musicians podcast features a conversation with country singer-songwriter Mira Godo. We became acquainted in 2014 whilst geeking around the South San Francisco Bay Area, where I had the opportunity to drum for Mira in a couple of different bands that consisted of a few mutual friends. As I mentioned to her in our conversation, I was really impressed the first time I heard her guitar playing and voice, and that was just during soundcheck before our gig had ever gotten underway. But Mira's the whole package from musicianship to good looks and charm. I have high hopes for her in the highly competitive landscape of national country music scene. Our conversation takes place at an interesting time in Mira's journey. She's a young, albeit lifelong, singer-songwriter who made the daring move from Santa Cruz, California to Nashville in order to surround herself with other songwriters and various other music professionals. She's doing and learning all kinds of things in the process, all in the DIY spirit of making it happen. Please enjoy my chat with Mira Godo. Mira, welcome to the show. Thank you. Of course, thank you for taking time out of your day. It's been a little while, so I'm happy to just catch up, but also um, excited to share your your story with others. Um, I guess I will start with saying that I've been watching you here lately because of your move to Nashville. And I guess to give people a little bit of context, you and I met, it's been at least three years. Is that about right? That Three sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, we were, I guess, both sort of gigging around the South San Francisco Bay <laughs> Area, and through a very dear mutual acquaintance, we ended up playing some shows together, and for those of you who have not yet heard, seen, or know Mira, I was pretty blown away. Um, here's this Aww. great looking gal who plays guitar and sings really well and just has a nice personality, so it was uh, uh, fortuitous that I got to do those gigs with you, but... Let's get to you. Tell us about Nashville and how it all came about. Nashville, man, I've been wanting to move to Nashville for as long as I can remember. It's such a fun, artistic, supportive community. And I don't know, something happened last summer. I I was home thinking, you know what? If I don't go now, I'm never going to go. And it started taking with taking trips out there to visit and write and and take workshops and classes. And it turned into, okay, maybe I'll rent a room because that'll be cheaper than hotels for a week. And then we just (laughs) bought a house out there. So now it's become quite a bit more permanent, but um, it's definitely a really good move for me musically and within the songwriting community. It's been, it's been amazing. What was the time span from, the period where you're recording the idea of visiting and when you actually made the move, the permanent move? I want to say from thinking about it to renting a room was probably six months. And it's been a year since making the move to rent a room. So that's, um, I guess, 18 months it's been since, since I started thinking about it. Okay. I ask because in episode two of this podcast, I got to interview someone that I had recently become acquainted with who now resides in Dallas-Fort Worth, which is I, I believe is where he's from. His name's Chris Responti, and he, he's got quite a body of work. He's a guitarist, songwriter, recording engineer, and spent quite a bit of time in Nashville. And he, too, talked about visiting, you know, kind of commuting, doing work with people, and then eventually moving out there. And uh, something else he talked about that I'd love to hear your perspective on is it's been relatively a short time that you've been there, uh, Chris, the guy that I was just talking about, he he spent a lot of time developing relationships, and um, this has been a common theme. That and you know, kind of networking has been a common theme among my guests. And I'm just kind of curious, how's that part going for you? What's your perspective on it as far as how it will be of help to you and those around you? Relationships and networking is definitely a big 
big part of the industry. If people don't like you, there's a hundred people in line behind you that are willing to do that job as well. So it's very important to be likable and pleasant to work with and professional. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that's really important. I very much enjoy Nashville and the community that, you know, that I've become a part of. I find that people I work with are very supportive. They want me to do well because, you know, we work together. So my success means their success and, and we share every little victory that someone gets is a shared victory. It's a community effort. So I find everyone's really rooting for everybody else as well as themselves. It's, it's wonderful. And I, I love it. And I'm so happy to be, be there and share that with everybody. I bet. When you moved, when you made the permanent move, had you already found yourself with a, you know, a great circle of friends and contacts or was there the normal kind of nervousness that, oh boy, you know, now I got to go meet some people or how, how am I going to do this with not knowing a lot of people? I didn't know anyone moving out there. It was, it was very scary actually getting there. I had been married a month and my husband and I drove out and then he got on a plane and flew home and I was all of a sudden there by myself. So I joined a songwriting group called Nashville Songwriters Association International, NSAI, and they've been wonderful to me. They're great with networking and introducing you to people and then classes and workshops and chapters and meetings. And um, and then I tried to play out as much as possible because I will hear other people playing out and they will hear me and we can kind of find each other. Oh, yeah, I think we would write something well together. Or, hey, I'm going to this show that I think you'd like because your style of music, you know, fits that style of music. You should come with me. And, and it, it snowballs from there. But it was a good jumping off point, the NSAI, and as many open mics as possible. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, NSAI, thanks for saying that a second time. I was going to ask you. Sounds like something that other people might want to know about. And Absolutely. How savvy of you to seek out an organization like that? I mean, I'm sure for many it seems like it makes perfect sense, but still, moving to a new place, I would imagine that was huge for you. Yes. <laughs> do that. So off track, spiders. I, <laughs> I gathered that you have a few of them in Nashville, and now I thought I was going to learn that you had a lot of mosquitoes there too, but maybe those the mosquitoes are Santa Cruz. <laughs> but what's the deal with the spiders? The spiders. That was an interesting chapter. <laughs> There's a spider called the brown recluse that I had heard of but didn't know much about. I found out that the house I was living in, I had two roommates at the time, and one of them told me, hey, just so you know, I saw a brown recluse the other day. And I thought, huh, okay, I should probably Google that. So I looked it up and I thought, okay, well, they're pretty poisonous. I should keep an eye out for them. I climbed in bed and I felt something on my leg and I thought, no, you know, I'm just freaking myself out now because I, I read about it. So I got a flashlight on my phone and I lifted up the covers just to look before freaking out. And there was a brown recluse on my leg, had a major conniption fit you know, ripping covers off. Anyways, I ended up setting a bunch of traps in my room. It wasn't normal. I was living in a very old house in an attic. So there was tons, but I caught over 30 in my bedroom alone. Oh I moved out. <laughs> <laughs> I moved out as soon as I could, but it was, it was not a very pleasant living situation because of that. Okay. So was, yeah. you're not just um, a scaredy cat, so to speak. You had a problem. There. Oh no! I had a we had a we had an infestation. It was pretty bad. I did end up getting bit, but it was you know three months later it was better. So yeah, what is the uh, you have to get treatment for that right with that particular spider? I didn't actually. I it was very weird. Um, so some of the bites turn uh, necrotic, which means your yep. your skin starts to kind of eat away mm -hmm. at its. Um, I didn't end up having that reaction, but it, it did take a long time to heal is what happened. It was a little scary. I didn't know that's what it was at first. And then two months later, I went, oh my gosh, that's probably what happened, what this is. And then took another month after that to go away. So now I have a nice little scar. It was on my back. <laughs> so probably got me while I was sleeping. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, I was a little amused. Although I recognize it was a brown recluse, I, I remember it now that you had said that. And but wow, thirty. So yeah, you definitely had some sort of nest thing going on in there. <laughs> yeah, I will send you pictures if you'd like to see some of the traps. They were pretty gross. <laughs> you know what? It would be nice to uh, put some live uh, pictures on the, uh, <laughs> on, okay. the post, on the post for your for your episode. Yeah, I've sure got video too. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice, nice. We'll have to share all of that. Um, all right, all right. Let's switch gears and get back to music. I back to music. Saw. Uh, pinned tweet that you have on your Twitter page for your, I believe mm -hmm. you're calling it your EPK, and it's really great. And I wanted to, so to describe it, it's just a great video of of you speaking at first. I don't remember if you have your guitar in your hand, just sort of talking about the journey. Uh, if I remember right, I've watched a few videos of you now, but you're um, doing a little playing on there, but really just kind of introducing yourself. I have not seen a lot of people, or at least not where you're at, do um, something like that, even though everyone knows that they need to have something together. But I think it threw me a little bit that you had had it done in video format, which makes perfect sense. But anyway, how did it come about? How'd you do it? I'm going to send people to see it, so they're going to want to know. Okay. Um, I have a friend who works in video, and we are we're workout buddies. So I see her every morning at 7 a.m., and she tells me about her job, and I tell her about mine. And there's not a whole lot of crossover because of what her like what her line of work is she does a lot of corporate and, and stuff and I I thought you know I've been wanting to do this this EPK for a while I've seen other artists have them and I think they're great and it's something that people will watch rather than read I think watching is more interesting than reading sometimes and in this case it's easier for people to kind of click and go okay now I know Mira a little bit better so I I also strive for transparency in who I am as an artist. And I think that something like that is valuable to my brand, so to speak. I don't know if that's, that's a, you know, too big a word for me, but I've been wanting to do it. And I saw a video that Deva is her name, uh, had done for a company called Melt, a makeup brand. And, and she did a interview type format for this, this brand. And it was wonderfully done. She did an amazing job, and I said, you know, I would love for you to do that for me sometime. And so she did awesome work. I would absolutely recommend her. Deva Anderson is her name. She did a great job for me. She brought in help and a makeup person because I look all put together that day. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. I did, you know, I did shower. It was great. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she was awesome. She made me feel very comfortable, which was nice, but it was helpful that I knew her, too. So I don't think everybody has that advantage. <laughs> How does Davis spell her first name? D-E-V-A. D-E-V-A. How long is the video, approximately? Um, it's about three minutes, I think. Yeah, it's really well done. Completely. And considering she probably has a really rounded portfolio of work, but my reaction when you told me who you got was uh, I was uh, a little more impressed because I'm assuming she hasn't done a lot of videos of that specific type. And I think to make a songwriter or a musician look the way they need to look. Not everyone can do that, and she did a wonderful job. I think so, too. She did a great job, and I'll forever be grateful for her Yeah, it's her incredible. Talent. So that, that I, format for a promo piece is pretty common from what you've seen in the area? Um, I mean, as far as, say, a, as far as having it on video. I mean, not so much the, the way David did it specifically. but I don't know that it's necessary. I don't know that, that people... Um, songwriters, singer songwriters, artists are striving to get that because they don't know that it's essential. It's just something that I saw some artists have, and I I thought that I would want that for me for something to you know offer people who stumble across my music. Who is this girl? Oh, okay, just here's another video. So it's it's available. It's not. It's almost like a resume. Yeah, yeah. Totally. You know, like LinkedIn is is a thing for. For corporate jobs, and this is just kind of my my resume. This is who I am. Yeah. So I don't know. It's not. It's definitely not essential. But I I thought I felt it was important for me. Perhaps you're helping to raise the bar for others then, because I frankly I hadn't seen an artist do that before. And I know, kind of looking at where you're at in the early part of your journey, it made it a l little more impressive because you're you know it clearly helps you stand out as being very serious and passionate. So very good stuff. And then I, at the same day, I ran across new plaid shirt, your EP. Ah, 
which I bought today, by the way, on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. So what what's the story behind that? I you know when I saw it, and I apologize that I didn't know about it sooner. And when I saw it, I thought it was brand new, but maybe it's a new push to sort of bring awareness about it. But then when I saw the published date, I was like, oh, it's been out for a while. But anyway, what's the story behind it and the title? You know, I've been writing songs since I've been since I started playing the guitar when I was 15. And one day I just kind of woke up and, and said that it was time to record, you know, put some of it out. I, I had no way to share any of it with anyone other than bedroom recordings on my phone. And I thought that I, I wanted to do it properly. So I was getting good response from the song I wrote called New Plaid Shirt. And I thought, okay, well, I'll call the whole album that and I'll make everything plaid you know <laughs> that was my phase my plaid phase but it, it came out about four years ago now I can't believe it's been that long so it's time to do a new one so I'm getting ready to do that actually but um new plaid shirt was a great learning experience I had to do everything myself and it was tough but I learned a lot I'm better equipped to handle the next one what did you learn along the way that you're going to maybe apply or do differently for the next one? I learned to save all of the artwork so that if I have to order more copies, <laughs> <laughs> that I need, don't, don't have to read that. Um, I, I had to register as a publisher so that I could publish all of my songs. So that was interesting to learn how to do that, copywriting everything, getting a barcode, applying for Pandora. They have a separate selection committee approval process than, than a lot of the other digital distribution companies. So, you know, it's a long process and I sit in front of the computer a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I think now, four years later, a lot of things have merged to make it seamless. So it should be a bit easier. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what I would do differently. I think that I'm pretty happy still with how that turned out. Good. I might get more copies. Yeah, I was going to joke with you and say, yeah, it'll be easier except for the new learning curve because everything changed. <laughs> yeah, everything did change. It's funny. <laughs> I, I published a book, which I, I'm sure you know about, and this is the second podcast, and many of the, the motions are the same, the, the mediums the publishing, the copyright, so I feel for you. Um, and yeah, it's a learning experience when you're doing it DIY style, as they say. Yes. <laughs> Learning all that stuff. So, man, that's great that you did all that. And then... Thank you. Do you, Are you planning to work with a band on the upcoming one? And, and if, if so, um, how's that going? Yes and no. I am probably going to, you know, write and record everything myself and then hire a band to play it at shows um, rather than bring a band into the studio with me. I think I'll hire studio musicians to record it because there's so many of them in Nashville. And, you know, you can hire great people for very affordable prices because there's so many and they just love what they do. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure yet what that's going to look like, but I am very excited and I hope to have something out by the new year. Cool. Well, I would love to check in with you when you release something new to talk a little bit among other things about the experience of hiring players to do that. And also about uh, if you do something kind of similar for the live performances, I would love to hear about that. I know it's um, a different realm, I suppose is a good word than, than what I've been accustomed to as a musician. And there's a lot of people that are in your shoes that I'm sure would love to hear the experience. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm really excited and I can't wait to, share it with you. So I'll send you some stuff once we get. Cool. So kind people that are thing. looking, people that are looking, I'm sorry if I cut you off where we are having a little bit of um, in dropping with the, <laughs> we're losing packets. Yeah. in the conversation, most of it's coming through great, but I apologize if I cut you off just now. I didn't hear you talking, I think. Um, no, that's okay. So if people are looking by the way for new plaid shirt on iTunes, they're going to be thrown a little bit because I didn't find it under Miragoto, by the way, but how do they easily yes. find it? Look for new plaid shirt, I suppose. It's under my maiden name, uh, Mira Parfit, P A R F I T T. But I believe it'll come up under new plaid shirt. So I just tell it people will. to search for that now. It will, and I forgot to 
try your your maiden name. I didn't. It didn't occur to me that it would be there, but and that was just a trick to get you to say your maiden name for me to see if I knew how to pronounce it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I figured it was good for people who might look for it in case they. Because I don't know whatever for whatever reason my mind was thinking. Okay, I can find it by her name, and I was like, hmm, all right, I'll try this. <laughs> but I did find you. I always like to ask my guests, particularly those that are are players like yourself, about their music education. I know that you have had some. I because of my little minor emergency I told you about before we came on air. I, I didn't do as much digging on that as I would normally, but tell me about your music education. Okay. Well, I started playing the violin when I was three. So that that was the beginning of it for me. My parents, and I don't even remember this, tell me that every single day I, that I saw a friend of mine was playing violin, and every day for weeks... I would ask them, can we go get a violin? Can we go get a violin? I want to take violin lessons. Let's play violin. And they said it was really quite annoying about it. And so they they went and got me one. It was so tiny, and I wasn't even really allowed to play it without my teacher because they were worried I would break it. So I started on a tissue box with a ruler taped to it for my nice. teacher's <laughs> request. And I played violin for about a decade. I was classically trained through Suzuki. And that was awesome. But then I, you know, then I was a teenager and I thought, violin's not, not cool. Guitar is cool. I want to play guitar. So I switched and I, I picked that up. My teacher at the time, I don't know if he was just blowing smoke, but he told me I picked it up faster than a lot of his other students because I already had some string training. So, you know, I, I was just enamored with the guitar. I, my grades went down because I, I, I played so much. I, one lesson a week just wasn't enough for me. I wanted to learn more and more. And then I found, you know, there were chord sheets online and, and videos that I could watch. And anyone who played the guitar, I would ask them, oh, can, can you show me some stuff? I was so excited. And, and then the singing started, and that was my sister's fault. She was in a uh, musical theater her whole life. She, I could never get her to stop singing. And she loved singing with me when I would play. And then she tried to teach me how to harmonize with her so that, you know, it would sound better. And I was very shy at first and wouldn't do that for people, but I would sing harmony with her. And then she wasn't always around. So I would sing by myself, you know, when I could. And so she kind of pulled it out of me. I, I tell her all the time, it's your fault that I'm, I have this job now. <laughs> <laughs> um, took, took some singing lessons and I had a vocal coach, Marcus. He was great. Um, in San Jose while I was in college, and it snowballed from there, you know. Wow, so a lot of piece together education, that's very cool. When I yeah. first met you and you uh, you played guitar at that gig and, and were singing, and in my small world, I just not had an opportunity to see a lot of women play guitar on stage, you know, on stage with me, Yeah, and much less sing. So I was highly impressed. I was like, all right. So um, Thank you. for me, be a little ignorant here, but can you tell me about uh, Suzuki? Oh, it's just, it's classical music. It's Mozart and Vivaldi, and it's a um, Japanese lesson style. So there's book one, book two, and book three, all the way to ten, and, and you graduate at the end of each book and do a big recital every year. So, yeah, it's it's just a method. So you had somebody who typically does that, does it with an instructor who happens to teach that method, or is it a little, a little yes. more formalized? Okay. I, you know, I think I'd heard of it before, but when you mentioned it, I'm like, okay, I, I have no idea. Is that like a school? But okay, cool. For people who hear this and go, I want my kid to learn to play violin really well. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I wish I had stayed in it now as an adult, and I'm sure that's what everybody says, but I, I wish I had just also picked up the guitar and continued with violin. I would love to have more violin chops than I do now, but that's okay. Guitar's treating me well, so... Well, as I like to tell people, you got nothing but time, so it's never too late. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. And then I know you're DIYing it, as we said earlier, and having to figure so much out on your own, and hopefully with the help of some great friends now, too. I, another theme I try to hit on with my guests is business and marketing. How, well, clearly you're involved in it. I mostly like to ask try to figure out, you know, what, what have you learned so far or are there any mistakes that, you know, you can share that might help people out or how involved are you in that part of it? In the business and marketing side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to do everything by myself. I haven't 
the only th person I've hired so far as of a week ago is an attorney. So I do, you know, I do everything myself. The marketing side of it, I'm learning. I have to kind of pick and choose because it can be very expensive. So I try to do as much of it as I can on social media. Mm -hmm. And a big platform for me that's been very, very good to me has been Periscope. I saw that. Um, it's, yeah, it's, that's been really fun. It's, for those of you that don't know, it's, it's live broadcasting through Twitter. It's the, essentially the live Facebook, Facebook live of Twitter. I started singing on there just because I didn't have anybody to sing to one night. Mm -hmm. And then I did it again and again and I would take requests. And then I started to get people that would show up regularly and they would ask me, Hey, do you write too? And I said, I do. You want to hear some stuff that I've written? And it's, I mean, it's been a couple of years now and, and Periscope has unrolled a VIP program and now I'm a, a gold tier member of that VIP program. And I get to help have input for things that they, they are trying to change about their platform and, and improve on their platform. And so it's really fun. It gives someone like me who can't do a national tour a way to reach 30,000 people in one night. Well, what drew you to Periscope? What gave you the idea, Anth I guess, is what I'm... Anthony, my husband, uh, told me, hey, there's this cool app that just came out called Periscope. You got to download it. So we did, and then I we would broadcast silly things we were doing, like the Ferris wheel at the boardwalk here in Santa Cruz, or just hanging out at the beach. And one night, I was in Nashville by myself, and I didn't have anything to do that night. And I thought, you know what? The only thing that I can do as a songwriter is be who I am. If I try to be anybody else, it's going to, it's going to show like, for example, country music. I'm from Northern California, hippie town, USA. If I start singing about dirt roads, people aren't going to believe me because I'm not, I wasn't raised country. I wasn't raised on country music. I was, you know, I'm from California, like I said. So I thought, why don't I start singing some stuff on Periscope and see if there's even people that are interested in what I'm doing. See if there's even a market for it. And it turns out there's literally dozens of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, there's, um, it started generally as, as an interest, as curiosity. Are there people that even like what I have to say? That's very cool. And I, I guess I've heard kind of similar stories how, I mean, I have a, um, there's a, a brand builder, marketer guy that I'm acquainted with that uh, used it because he was told it was a great platform. You should check it out. And I, I think he may have, his daughter may have finally got him to where he, you know, kind of understood it. And then he went all in <laughs> and did really well with it. He sensed, backed off of it a little bit. But anyway, I have heard from other people that just started kind of one night, like you said, that you started singing on it and turned out people enjoyed it. So what a great way to test your, um, your idea or your talent. Yeah, it's, they've been really great to me. And there's a lot of people on there now who who follow me regularly and they, they write me now separately from Periscope. Hey, when are you going to be on again? I want to make sure that I don't miss it. And then, you know, there's always the people on there who, who log on just to kind of harass you a little bit, but <laughs> it's to the point now that my, the people who are there to watch me regularly, they block the people who say mean things or just show up to kind of troll you a little bit. Mm -hmm. They block them so I don't even have to deal with it. Oh, that's they jump cool. on them right away. Yeah, they're they've been very very good to me. I'm I'm really spoiled in in Periscope. I've found a very nice community there. I don't know that that's a common probably they're all doing it now, but I didn't realize that was a a thing that your community can do something like that for you. There's a young woman named Amy Schmidhauer. I hope I said her name right. She has this, you, she's a big YouTuber and she has a channel called Sexy Savvy Social. And she was talking about the trolls and it's kind of funny. She's like, you'll inevitably, I think I was reading about this because I, I bought her book and videos becoming a sort of bigger part of what I do both for this and another part of my life. But um, she was just talking about the trolling that happens and uh, she made me laugh in there. She says, inevitably there's someone in there who just, you know, while you're doing a live video, they're like, show me your boobs. And she's like, no, <laughs> but she, <laughs> she did talk about and how engaging them really catches them off guard <laughs> and not engaging them in any sort of like uh, mean or aggressive way. But just the fact that uh, I guess that 
they find she's listening or reading, you know, and it catches them off yeah. guard and it tends to uh, stop. And of course, you know, she can easily block stuff. But anyway, she had some funny stories about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, what about, you're all over the web, by the way. So, and I'll, I'm going to have all this in our show notes, but um, it did strike me that Periscope was kind of your jam right now. Yeah. And um, I, the one thing I didn't get to look at was your SoundCloud page. Are you using that a lot? I am. I put up there all of my demos and work tapes that I want to kind of compile. Um, so it's not really something that I market. It's just something that's up that is kind of up there for me to like send a link. Hey, this is this is what I sound like. Um, let's write together sometime. It's more of a tool for other people in the industry that I can send links to, but it's now turned into, Hey, I can make playlists and put them up on my website or, you know, my albums up there too. So I can put, uh, I made a playlist of just my album. So that's, you know, people can listen to it for free on there if they want, oh, that's but cool. it's just a, essentially a library of Mira. <laughs> so your super fans can go like dig into some yeah. of the things that you're not publishing. That's pretty They cool. can hear all my unreleased stuff, stuff that I've, you know, recorded that's not for me. That I'm either I'm singing on or that I hired a singer for. It's not just stuff I've written, so it's it's fun. Yeah, that's really cool. I I'm exposed to SoundCloud on a regular basis, both for music and podcasters use it, and I've just mm-hmm. posted a small sundry of weird shit on there. But that is really that's I find it interesting how you're using it. Um, so thanks for sharing that. I it makes me realize it's something um, to talk about with with other guests. Yeah. So that's cool. And anybody who's listening to this knows that they can uh, hear more of you on there. That's very cool. Yeah. So why country? You know, I'm always, whenever I get to see or play with, it seems to always be the women that I come across in my music life. There's another young woman that you're acquainted with from the South um, San Francisco Bay Area who has a passion for kind of the alt country thing. But anyway, how did you get, how did you get into country? I was a little surprised when I heard you. I'm like, makes perfect sense. But yeah, why, how? I love country music. I think that I love storytelling. If you can tell a complete story in three and a half minutes and you can make it rhyme, (laughs) I think that's amazing. Start to finish. I was very interested in the storytelling aspect of country music and I'm still learning and there's always more to learn, but uh, some of the greatest songs in country music, I mean, if they make you cry, they make you feel things, they help you through tough times, they make you feel worse, actually, sometimes. <laughs> but but um, that you can generate emotion in someone so strongly in three and a half minutes in song format, I think that's amazing. I hope to be able to touch people in that way with my music, whether it's laughing or crying or you know tongue in cheek i just think it's it's a really special thing to be able to do in that short amount of time and you you have to pick every single word carefully because you only have you know like i said three minutes so it's a gift picking i mean even picking an and over a but changes the story it's so interesting i love learning about it i i can't get enough songwriting workshops on my schedule (laughs) well what about the songwriting workshops i don't i don't (laughs) i haven't really talked to anyone about these and i would imagine they're hugely important but what are what are you finding most helpful about them and most enjoyable i love so there's no shortage of songwriting workshops out there it's about finding the right one for you i my favorite part so far has been with a teacher named steve seskin who's actually also a bay area guy who travels to Nashville, like myself. How does he spell his last name? S-E-S-K-I-N, okay. Seskin. Okay. He will take a song that he's written, first draft, and he'll play it for us and say, okay, now see how there's like nothing really wrong with it. It's okay, but it can be better in these parts. And then he'll tell us why he didn't like something or why he thought he could beat that section. And then he'll play what he, what he changed it to. And it is infinitely better there was nothing really wrong with the first version but what he's you know the little changes he's made or maybe even big changes that he's made makes it better and then even from there maybe he has a third or a fourth draft so I love learning through example that way I think that's very interesting and it challenges me to revisit songs that I have 
previously thought were finished and go, wait a minute, I can make this better if I change this one line. I've already said this. I want to say something else here. Or, you know, the bridge is the only new information the songwriter, the listener is going to get, you know, before the end of the song. So make sure that's, that's good. You know, it's very, very interesting watching a song evolve in that way. So it sounds like a lot of what you learn is almost processes for improving uh, different facets of the song, but I'm sure also just a large list of things to consider and maybe a little less about something that's more technical when it comes to songwriting. Is that accurate? I guess so. There's the technical side too. Mm -hmm. There's people tend to say, oh, I'm more of a melody guy or gal or, oh, I'm more of a lyric person myself. And so if like me, I identify more as a melody person. So I like to learn more about the lyrics. That's, I think, why learning about, oh, I changed these lyrics from this to that. That's why it's kind of so interesting to me because I'm, I'm interested to be more of a lyric person in a strong suit. So Does that mean that you're most interested in, and this is going to sound funny maybe, or maybe they actually use the term, but like lyric development? I guess so. I like working with people who who are very strong in lyrics because I know a lot of times what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. So I, what I like to bring to the table is I have this great melody. It sounds very happy. Let's do something upbeat. And I, the one line that I keep, you know, harping on is this line. And then so we'll write about that. But they, I like when you know they kind of know exactly how to say something to like invoke emotion, and that's what I want to learn how to do better in my own writing. Um, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. In trying to become a better interviewer myself, there is a skill set I've heard talked about multiple times, which is invoking emotion. In yes. Your, in your <laughs> <laughs> Similar. Um, something you said made me want to ask you, what is the gender demographic for you at songwriting workshops and just among the crowd that you're hanging with? Are there a lot of other women and are there a lot of people in your age group? Is it more? Is it a ton more guys doing it? And ages are all over the map. I've written with sixteen-year-olds and I've written with seventy-year-olds. There are a lot more males than females in this industry. I was speaking with a woman that I write with all the time. Her name's Jane Bach. She's a phenomenal writer. I was asking her, "What do you think about you know men and women in the industry?" And she said, "It was very, very funny." She told me. You know, there's more men in this industry than there are women. But even if there were as many women as there were men, there would still be more men. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She might kill me for telling telling you that that was her that said that. But um, <laughs> there's a big gap in country radio right now that I keep reading about. Something like 12% of airplay on country radio is females, and the rest is men. So it's definitely like a male-driven, male, driven, male in, I don't know, infested is not the right word. What's the word I'm looking for? See, this is <laughs> why I'm that. a melody person. <laughs> I love that. It's just a male-dominant uh, industry. So I love working with everyone, but I do tend to gravitate towards women because then we can write songs for women. You know, I don't want to say I don't like writing with men because I do, but there's something about if I have an idea that I think is a female song, female idea, then I do, you know, hold on to that for, for women co-writers. But same thing for men. If I have an idea that I think is great for a, a male, then I'm going to hold on to it until I'm with at least one guy, and if not two, you know. Well, I don't, I don't fit the ideal demographic for country music listener, but I far and away prefer the female vocalists. Now, I tend to listen to, I guess, what gets categorized as alt country. But I think I'm, I don't necessarily feel the same about pop and rock, but I joke, or my wife and I joke that I, you know, have like a chick rock playlist <laughs> because I generally, I don't know what it is. It's a, I was telling a, another guest recently that I can listen to a song a lot of times and not be able to tell you what they said. I am so focused on melody both from, mm. from lyrics and the other melodic instruments, which is funny. I know that drums can totally be melodic, and I love listening to the drums as a drummer, but I really love listening to vocal melody, 
um, guitar, piano melody, and all the different things, textures they create. And for whatever reason, female voices just appeal to me more so. Mm. Um, anyway, like I said, I'm not the typical demographic. but <laughs> No, that's great. So I would imagine that a lot of people are contemplating a move like yours to Nashville or Austin. If you don't necessarily have a uh, uh, quick response, it's okay because you would not be alone. But are there any recommendations, and I almost hate to use the word advice, but any recommendations or lessons that you would care to share with others that might be on the precipice of making a similar move? I make, I'm jokingly using that word because it reminds me of a cheesy movie line, but... <laughs> yeah, do you, anything that you've learned along the way or recommendations you would have for someone who is in the shoes you were wearing 18 months ago or wherever you feel like the, you know, sort of turning point in either your decision or point that you're at right now is? I am going to go ahead and say do it. <laughs> Just make the move and make the jump. I my songwriting has improved so much and I have songs now I would have never dreamed to have written um, if I hadn't moved here. It's done great things for me. I've learned so much. But on, not only that, I've met people that I'm grateful to know, not only as friends, but as, you know, as colleagues. And I think that if you're serious about songwriting, then you need to be where all the songwriting is happening. Um, and that's not exclusively Nashville. That's, you know, there's Los Angeles and a bit in New York and Austin as well. And so I think that um, if you're thinking about it and you're serious about it, it might be time to, to rent an apartment and, and do that. Sound advice. I am always recommending to others that surrounding yourself with like-minded people is great. Do you find something that I really love doing and am constantly aspiring to do more of is to be around, in the case of musicians, be around musicians that are better than me or you know anyone that's doing something that I'm doing who does it better than me do you feel that way absolutely yeah. do you absolutely i in songwriting it's called writing up you know if you're writing with someone who who you think is better than you oh i was you know i was writing up today it was, it's it's a very silly term but i like it actually <laughs> but i you know it's always a a fun time when you get to write with someone who who you feel is better than you, whether or not they are, that's up for debate. But if you feel that the person you're writing with is better than you, then it's, it's always, Oh my gosh, I can't believe you thought to say it that way. That's so cool. It's very exciting. And who knows, maybe they feel that way about you too. Yeah. And you know, something I'm so fond of in other musicians, and I would imagine that they're, I, I'm imagine, I know it's true for many songwriters on, on both sides of this fence, but it's been so interesting for me and enjoyable for me to be around musicians that I observe are just really good at lifting everyone else up and they're mm -hmm. to the extent that they're always encouraging. You know, when I played with others over the years, as long as I'm not in a super unfamiliar environment, you know, like subbing somewhere where I just have no choice but to be super focused on what I'm doing nonstop. But, you know, I tend to be unintentionally hard on <laughs> people that are playing with me. But in the same environments, I played with people who are just so great at, you know, they're better at what they do than I am at what I do, but they're just fantastic at always encouraging and lifting others up or as you use the term writing up. So, um, and what a, what an attractive quality to have, oh, you know, yeah. as a person, as a human being to just always be the person that, that lifts other people up and, and can facilitate an environment of happiness and encouragement. And, you know, that's what I aspire to do too, is, is I would love to have, in my live band, I just, I want everybody to be having a great time and want to continue to play for me because it's fun and they enjoy it and I pay them, you know, but yeah, what a great environment to facilitate, to be somebody that, that brings joy to like the people around them. And, and aren't the best shows that you've seen the ones where everyone is having a good time, Absolutely. you know, or the best shows as a drummer that you've been a part of where everyone is on stage and laughing or enjoying themselves or not afraid to go out into the audience and get a little bit silly with, you know, the drunk crowd over in the corner. But it's just, it's so much more fun. And that is what makes us have the best job in the whole world. Yes. And I think that's a lovely note to wrap up on. And I, I especially love the way you put it, that what a great quality it is uh, to have as a person. And I, I think that's why I always trip out on it so hard when I get to be around people like that. And yeah, 
it's something I would like to do more of. So I guess I just keep surrounding myself with those people and it'll happen. Okay. <laughs> so let's make sure that everyone knows where to find you. So this is your chance to tell listeners where they can find <laughs> you on the webs and anything else you want to tell them. All right. Well, I'm pretty much everywhere, I think. <laughs> I, like I said, I strive for transparency. But uh, my website is miragoto.com, M-I-R-A-G-O-T-O.com. And there's links for everything on there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I've got SoundCloud playlists on there. I've got all my shows on there. YouTube. I've even got a con- YouTube is on there. <laughs> I've got a contact form that goes directly to my email, and I write everyone back. So please write me. I would love to hear from you. And I want to know where you're from so that I can try to book a show in your town. That is so cool. And you're right. I scraped all of your social URLs right off of your website. So you can find links to where Mira is at, what she's thinking, what she's doing, what she's writing at miragoto.com or miragoto as you say it. I'll try to pronounce it right. I've always said That's go- okay. goto. I don't know why. It's like I say. It's Bluto. actually a new name for me. So I'm not entirely confident in how to pronounce it either. <laughs> can you get back to me when you've got it? No, I, it's goto. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mira, it's been a pleasure. Um, I hope that we can do this again in a repeat episode. And you're such a a uh, lovely person to hang out with. I feel really Thank lucky that I've so had the much. opportunity. I think you're going to have big success. You're fun to listen to, fun to watch, fun to hang out with. So all the best. Please keep me posted. And uh, yeah, we'll see you around soon, I hope. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course, you're most welcome. Talk soon. Hey, this is Robonzo. Thanks so much for listening. Did you know I'm also an author? Check out my book, The Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs, How to Get Booked and Paid What You're Worth Over and Over Again, available on Amazon. And the book is also available in audio format as The Unstarving Musician's Guide podcast. Check it out wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Last but not least, are you a gigging musician, recording artist, songwriter, or touring professional? Perhaps struggling to get your music out to the world? Struggling to get the gigs you want? Pop over to unstarvingmusician.com and sign up for my email list. I'll send you an occasional email with tips, expert advice, music, musician resources, and anything else I come across that might make your journey better and brighter. With much gratitude, peace, love, and more cowbell. Cowbell.